Hello guys, now we're back. So, last video, we did uh, the ball socketing, and we did the suspension in the other video, and we also did this, the steering. So now that those were all done, uh, I recommend having the fading door tool, and then just hitting this base right here, and that'll let you, uh, you know, get in and out of it. <laughs> and anyways, so now we're going to actually make our ACF engine. Um, this is quite a process, unfortunately. And seeing how this is going to be a rock crawler, we're going to want a large engine, but not not a V12. We don't need a V12. That's too much power. Uh, especially considering our gears are going to be down a lot. So we want one with the most uh, the most torque, not necessarily the most horsepower, but the most torque which is, I do believe so, it's this one, the V8 diesel. This one has the most torque. And we're just going to right-click no collide that. And like I, I well, actually, do not um, weight these things down at all. Do not weight these things. Because even if you weight it by one pound up or down, the code is set for ACF to stop working. So you can't cheat. <clears throat> You can't cheat that way by setting it to one pound. It has to be, it pretty much should be in the middle or in the back. Never make it in the front. I made that mistake a couple times before. It was not uh, a good thing. I'm gonna put mine in the middle. Now I'm gonna have it lined up. Everything's all, looks all good. Just that side out a little bit more. No, that side out a little bit more. No! Oh! Damn it. Uh, that sucks. Is that good? That's good. We're all good. Anyways. Alright, anyways. Now we're going to weld this thing. Well, actually, we're going to find out which way I put it. Okay, good. Weld that to the base and that to this thing. Now that we've done that. We want a differential. Well, actually, no, not a differential. A gearbox, and we're going to get a. It should be an eight-speed, considering this is a rock climber. An eight-speed inline large, and here's where the gears come in. So, if you just had it to these default gears, you wouldn't get up much of anything, because you know. So, I'm going to put this 0 0.02 which will get you up pretty much everything with this powerful engine and then 0, 0 uh, make that 4 0 0.06 0 0.08 oh wait, no, nope, 0.08 and then 0 0.1 0 0.12 0 0.14 and then negative which is actual reverse gear 8 should be reversed so negative 0 0.2 which will make it where you can reverse up of any up anything really get out of any situation just really slowly so we're going to spawn that there we're going to make our fading door fade again and that sucks dick at least i have the uh ball sockets done already for the most part i think yes we pretty much do and now I'm just going to move this into place. You want to be really careful around your spherical wheels, um, the, where you use the weight, the make spherical tool, because it makes the hitboxes on them fucking huge. That looks about right. All right. Anyways, now we're just going to put this relatively close to the engine, just to make it look better. Like, I'm going to put this up some. Actually, like over here. It doesn't have to be right next to the engine. It just can't be at too high of an angle or too sharp of an angle or else um, it won't work. Now get out your ACF menu and then right click the engine and right click that. And now weld tool, weld the uh, gearbox to the base and also to that thingy. Now that we've done that, last thing we're going to need is a differential. So ACF menu, 
go down to oh go up to differentials right here and we're gonna want a differential large and we're just gonna have that to a 0 0.50 and then 1.0 and now we're going to move this into place in front of our wheels so you're gonna want this down as much as possible without it looking bad or getting in the way and getting in the way of the ground clearance this looks about right so I'm just gonna weld this to the base plate and then that thing up there and now ACF menu again and we're going to uh, right click the gearbox and then right click that thing and then right click that thing then right click the wheels and now you would think oh I'd be done now we have power to the wheels no you only have power to the back two wheels that's all you have power to right now so this wouldn't get very far so you want to get out your advanced ball socket tool and then we're gonna do the middle ones first so negative 0 0.5 a 1 and then 0 0.1 and these ones are really easy the middle two are easy so just click the middle one side in the middle and then click the other wheel on the other side and now what you want to do is get y minimum to negative oh that's y minimum to negative 180 y maximum to 180 z minimum to negative 180 and z maximum to 180 and now just hit that one to that one that one to that one that one to that one oops shit I'm gonna undo both of those okay that one to that one 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 and then this one to this one this one to this one that one to that one and that one to that one and basically what this does you'll have power on all sides along with steering so when I did the steering uh, video I forgot to actually hook up the steering so I'm gonna be showing you how to do that now with all of this so now that we have everything done and welded what we need is our chair vehicles chairs jeep seat We're going to right click no collide this and now we are going to just place this somewhere around the front and eh. you can put as many seats on this thing as you want it doesn't really matter and now we're going to put that down some and now weld that to the base and yeah just to the base and now um, we want our advanced pod controller well first thing what I want to do get inside oh wait nope we actually didn't need the advanced pod controller advanced pod controller or the pod controller as it's known now I'm just gonna put that anywhere um, I'm just gonna put that right here right click the pod controller right click the chair and then get out your E2 tool it's super simple E2 code like it's only one line so okay tutorial I see if there it is it's just this uh, easy I'll have this down in the description it's so easy it's just engine equals W times 100 <laughs> it's that simple save and exit I'm gonna put that right here basically what that does is it um, when you press W it tells the engine to basically the idle with these engines are at 1% of its uh, of itself 1% of itself so if you times 1% by 100 you get your normal 100% so give out the engine will give 100% of its power if you press down W that shouldn't make that shouldn't make a little bit of sense to you and then once you're done doing that I think that's all you need for uh, propulsion and then I'll show you how to hook up the steering in a second so I'm just gonna do that alright so active goes to active on your pod controller that'll make it where you, when you get in the engine turns on let's see if any okay nothing snapped that means this is set up the right way and now throttle goes to engine on the expression 2 W goes to W on the pod controller so W from the E2 goes to W on the pod controller and then gear up I like to put this to mouse 1 that'll change the gears gear down to mouse 2 now that we have all that welded, oh, not welded, wired. Um, go ahead and put the brake to like space. That'll make that'll be like the brake really doesn't do much of anything, but you know, 
<clears throat> and just leave that normal. And now the steering part of this, just get a couple of your thruster tools out and set this to like twenty five thousand and set that back and just put one right here. Wait, hold on, before we do that, we should get our elastic tool and set this to ten thousand. And what we're gonna do is we we are going to uh hit this thing right here and then hit like back here in the middle and then do the same on that side and then do it one more time which will basically make it where uh, this thing will snap back to default like after you let go of A the the wheels will go back to place and you're gonna want that it's very important that you have that anyways now goes your uh, wire thrusters sorry about that and then just put one on either side of this and in the back right here and now we want to wire this up that'll pretty much take care of your steering once you wire this up so the back right goes to A oh well, actually yeah it goes A on your pocket controller the front uh, right goes to D the back left goes to D The back, uh, the front left goes to A. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and make an advanced duplication. Oh, well, hold on! Before we do that, sorry, I'm gonna show you guys how to wire up, wire up a screen so you can see your RPM and your uh, and your current gear. So just gonna do this, get a screen, and just set. Make sure uh, only one value is off, and then just name it gear and RPM. So that'll do this. And now we can just go ahead and move this into a place that will not be blocking our vision. So uh, I'd like to put mine behind me, like behind to the right or to the left, which I do on most of my vehicles. So it doesn't like cut off half my view of the world. I know you can set the model of these things, but it, it kept, uh, well, it actually it was bugging out the model selector thingy. So I'm just going to put that right there. Now I can have a full degree of view in front of me and I can look around and see that. And that's perfect. Now we can weld this into place. And now one last thing. We are going to uh, wire up our screen. So A, which is the gear, to the gearbox current gear. And then B, which is RPM to RPM on the engine and it'll tell us our current gear and the RPM now we're gonna make an advanced duplication of this or a duplication whatever you want to call it and now we're gonna set the weights on the duplication so I think I set this to 5000 before and then this one wants a 350 and then these things went to 350 as well and now the uh, tires all went to 500. It's not really important that you get the exact weights down, but it is recommended. And anyways, let me test the suspension. The suspension is working. Everything seems to be working here. You see, it's independent suspension. You see, the tires are still really, really heavy. Anyways. So, I'm going to, this is idle at 500 RPM. Everything is working right. Because this is as fast as it goes in first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear, seventh gear. And then don't change it to eighth gear, because eighth gear is reverse. So this thing it does go slow because our gear ratios are way down so I'm going to change this to first gear to climb up this first gear can pretty much climb up anything maybe second gear to climb up this hell even third nah second
Uh, yep. Okay, so eighth gear, reverse. Uh, whatever happens to reverse, I don't know. There we are. And now I'll show you me going over the track up here. Actually, not this track. Come on, reverse. Oh, reverse is working. Okay. It's just at idle RPM. I don't know why. Okay, well, I got it stuck just because the tire got stuck. Anyways, now we're just going to shoot this bitch up to seventh gear automatically. I'm going to show you the track over on the other side of this the 4 times 4 track and how well this thing can perform. Yeah. The steering on this type of vehicle is pretty buggy. Well, actually no, it's really not. Only uh if you're doing it at high speeds. Because of the way this thing tilts. Anyways, big ass rock, not a problem. First gear can pretty much get over anything. And then the higher gear you are, the faster you'll go, but the uh the harder it is for your engine to get over things. So that's why if you can't get over something in seventh gear, you just go down to like your third gear. If you can't get over it in third gear, then you get over it in first gear. And one more little trick I, I should show you. This probably won't get up this because of tire spinning, right? see how the tires are spinning it still got up it but the tires are spinning anyways I'll show you how to do that in a second let me yeah anyways so you want to go into your console type uh, fizz prop uh, fizz prop underscore material jalopy tire and basically what that does is you want to get out your fizz, uh, physical properties tool and then left click these and the reason why you're doing that is because the, the jalopy tire it from half-life 2 has a lot of friction on it on a lot of uh, ground friction or whatever you call that so that will uh you know allow me to climb over pretty much anything now and now that we've done that pretty much tested it completely over here Try to get up that. There we go. It really is no question of whether this thing can get up something. It's whether the tires just spin all the damn time. Even with the highest friction material. We could have used a larger V12 on this. But I don't see a point considering I have a V12 on another rock cra uh, crawler I made. And, oh, yep. When this happens, basically what happened is the drivetrain snapped from, usually from your, uh, differential to your back wheels. Or, so, uh, just right click that again. That, that happens sometimes. And that happens because of the, uh, of the suspension itself. Basically, is what happened is the wheels went to too high of a, uh, the angle or they went to too low of an angle and it snapped the drive shaft off that happens all the time now that we can see this is obviously working I'm just gonna go over this big log and then I'm gonna end the video alright we're over that now okay and one more thing before I end the video you can always just put this as a color. You can put the color of this thing down. And then also make it right click no glided. So it's like it's not even there. So it makes it look cooler. Anyways, thanks for watching my video. And this is how to make a rock crawler. Uh, have a good day and I hope you have fun with this.